Okay guys, so recently I had a client call me up and ask me to design one of his customers a pendant. And the pendant is based on his company's logo. So I wanted to show you guys how I do this. This is a pretty simple step. We're gonna use some free tools online to convert an image to an SVG. And we're gonna modify our image first just to make our life easier so that when we convert our image to an SVG, it converts much easier and cleaner into Blender 2.92. Let's get started. Before we get started with the uh, SVG creation, I just want to talk to you a little bit about Blender Gems. For those of you who know what Blender Gems is, it's my model library for jewelry design, where you can get parts and put them all together and make cool, interesting jewelry pieces. I keep adding to this every month. I created a new website called blendergems.com where you can go over there, create an account, log in, um, purchase things, download free files. Uh, if you have purchased anything, you get six months to get updates for those uh, on any purchases. Free downloads, obviously, you'll get those. Whenever you create an account, those files will show up under your dashboard. So check it out, blendergems.com, and let me know what you think. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is we have to get our image. And here's our image right here. And if I just make this a little bit bigger, you can see this is the file that was sent to me. This is the gentleman's logo for his company. And we are gonna convert this into a pendant. We're gonna make it a little bit on the bulky side. And this is gonna be a step-by-step -step process how we take this picture and turn it into a 3D model using an SVG import and then um, adding some geometry to it. With that done, we're gonna take our picture, and we're gonna open it up into our favorite editor. Now, most of you guys probably have an editor that you use, an image editor or a picture editor, and most of those tools will work fine. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open that up, and I've already done so, so I'm gonna open up my folder here, and this is the editor that I'm gonna be using. And there's a couple things here. What we wanna do first is, uh, actually we wanna to tone down the colors, because we want this to be black and white. So other than this gold area here, I want this black and white. To make my life a little easier, I'm actually going to crop this first. So I'm going to grab my crop tool and I'm going to just crop it so that I'm working with just an image size around the logo. So I'm just going to move these up and down until I get to the point where I'm pretty happy. Once I'm happy with that, I'll let, in this particular program, the little checkbox in that just crops my image out. From here, I have to convert this to a black and white image and I'm going to uh, use my tools and adjust the, uh, the picture here. So I want to adjust the hue and saturation levels. That'll bring that up, and now I can just play around with these until I get this to look like a black and white image, which looks pretty good. And I can play with these little tools here to get, the, get to the point where I'm happy. That's too much, too little. Uh, that looks okay right there. So I've taken the gold out and I've kind of modified it a little bit. Now I want to continue to play with uh, brightness and contrast so that I get those whites a whole lot whiter and the blacks a whole lot blacker. So I'm going to play with these tones here and that looks very good. Now... I could try to convert this into an SVG file, but it's actually better for an SVG converter if you have um, a white background with a black image. So what I wanna do now is invert this. Now most image editors will have an invert, and here we have an invert option, and voila, that looks pretty good. And I also want to zoom in a little bit and you can see we still have some artifacts. So to clean up those artifacts, I'm still going to adjust the uh, brightness and contrast until I get this uh, just enough so that there's no artifacts floating around. And that looks pretty good. And I'm going to hit OK. So there's my inverted image and I'm going to save this as a JPEG file. So I'll go to my file menu and I'll do a save as, and we will select JPEG, and we're gonna put this in the same folder. So I'm gonna call this uh, black, white image, and then we'll make sure it's a JPEG. 
And with that done, I can hit save. And now I'm just going to close this up and we won't save that. Here's our black and white image. And now I can convert this to an SVG. So I'm going to grab this image and I'm actually going to upload it to a website. And to do that, I'm going to move this out of the way just so it's off my screen. So the next thing I have to do is bring up our web browser and you can see I'm going over this website called Convertio and this will convert just about any image to an SVG file. Image converter. Download, show all files. And I'm going to go over my desktop. I'm going to go down to SVG pendant. Here is the black and white image. So I'm going to select vector, SVG. And now I'm going to hit the convert button. It might take a few minutes. Well, not a few minutes. It'll take a few seconds here. Once it's done converting, we can go ahead and download that into our folder. And there it is. We're going to download that SVG file. And it is saved in my downloads directory. And I'm just going to grab that, drag that over into my folder. Okay, so we've downloaded the file. It's in our folder with all the other images that we've had here. This was the original. This was the one we converted to black and white. And here's our vector graphic. So I'm going to come back over to Blender. I'm going to go to the File menu. I'm going to come down to Import. And I'm going to hit Import Scalable Vector Graphics. So we're going to do that. It's going to ask us where. I'm going to go over to my desktop and open up that SVG file and bring that in. And now you can see there's our vector. And just to make my life a little easier, I'm going to right click on this. I'm going to set the origin to the center of mass. I'm going to hit Shift S. I'm going to bring that to the center of the screen so that it's like so. And I'm going to turn off the uh, tabs here. So we'll turn those off here so we can see our image. Now you'll notice that it's black. Um, it's just the way that Blender imports these. You can change the color of this at any time you want. I'm going to leave it like that. We're going to go into modeling mode here. Okay, so there's our image right like that. And now we have full control over the vector of this. So how do I convert this to a dimensional object? Very simple. Let's come to our tabs here, our property tabs. We're going to come down to the object property. And we're going to come to the geometry section. I'm going to zoom that down. And I have a couple choices. I can extrude it. And if I extrude it, watch what happens in the 3D workspace. You can see I can extrude it up and down. That doesn't look too bad. But as a pendant, if we look straight down on this, you can see we've got some thinness along here. That could pose a problem if this particular pendant catches on something. So to alleviate that problem, what I want to do is actually give this a little bit more dimension. And to do that, I'll come over to the bevel option. And under depth, I'm going to increase the depth and just make this a little bit bulkier, like so. You'll see it rounds off the corners a little bit also. That looks very good. And now we have a lot of thickness here on our model. But we're not done yet. We have to make a couple of changes to this. So if I want to see what this looks like in wireframe, we can just turn on the wireframe mode so we can see our model. And you can see that there's a lot of dimensional errors in this particular model. We have uh, overlapping faces and vertex vertexes. So what I want to do is remesh this. To do that, I'm going to go back into modeling mode. I'm going to give this a texture so that we just see it better. Oops, wrong one. Okay, so you can see it a little bit better like this. While that may look really good, once I convert this to a mesh, it's going to look a little bit awkward. Select our pendant, right click on it, and we will convert this to a mesh right here. And now it's been converted to a mesh. You can see right here the symbol is a little triangle, which means our model is now a mesh. If I hit tab to go into edit mode, you can see the, the structure of our model is, is really poor. This is going to be poor. Uh, modeling in itself for 3D printing. So I'm going to remesh this using the remesh modifier. So I'm going to go back into object mode. I'm going to select wireframe so we can see the wireframe. 
And now I'm going to come over to our modifiers tab right here. I'm going to add in a remesh modifier, which is right there. And I'm just going to keep those standard voxel settings. I think that looks really good. We're going to go back into object mode, just take a look at our model. I'm going to hit apply so that we've applied that to this model. If we look at this from the top down, you can see it looks really good. And I like the way that looks. The next step, what I'd like to do is just export this as an STL file and bring it into my 3D slicer just to make sure that there's no errors in the model. So to do that, I'm going to right click or I'm going to I'm going to click on this with the left mouse button and select it. I'm going to go to the file menu, export, I'm going to export an STL. Remember to hit selection only, so we're only selecting the pendant that we just made. I'm going to select the folder that we're using, which is SVG pendant, and we're going to call this SVG pendant. I'm going to hit export and it'll export that STL out. Once it's done, we'll come back to Blender. The next step is to import this into your favorite slicer. So let's open our slicer and see what happens. Okay, I'm using the sheet two box slicer, so I've got my slicer open. What I'm going to do is go to file, open, and go to that particular folder. And we are going to import that pendant that we just made. And there it is, SVG pendant. I'm going to bring that in as an STL. And there it is. You can see we've got no errors in the model, um, which would be, you know, black marks through our model. This is going to print very well, and I'm pretty much happy with this. The only other thing that I have to do before I go and print that, and I'm just going to go back to Blender, is to make sure that it's dimensionally correct. The customer wants this to be about three inches by three inches, and he wants it about five millimeters high. So to do that, I'm going to open up my Tools tab, Hitting the end key, I'm going to come over to item with the pendant selected. And you can see here we're 49 millimeters by 37 millimeters. So to get about three inches, I need to be around 75 millimeters. So I'm going to size this up and we're going to bring that to about 75 millimeters, right about like that. And I'm going to make it a little larger just because um, I want to accommodate for shrinkage in my print. And then for the height of the model, this dimensional height, he wants this to be five millimeters, so I'm going to change that to five millimeters. And there is our model. Now, before I go and do anything else, I also want to send him an image of this, of course. Um, what we do is we'll drop a chain through this so that we can send him the chain, and we will let him determine if he likes the pendant design the way I've drawn it here. I'll show you a picture of that, and that's pretty much how we do it. So remember, it's important that when we take our image that we convert it to black and white. SVGs, when you're converting them from a JPEG or a PNG file format, really like to be in black and white. And I highly recommend that you do the invert or make your letters or details black and the background white. You get a much sharper image when you do that and you'll get much better results when importing that file into Blender. So here's some results of what I did. I did a couple images to send to the customer and hopefully uh, his customer likes it and we get the job for it. Thanks for watching guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing. It's been a pleasure doing this for you and have a great day.